Hey, what's up, nerds? Paul at Radio Free Hammer Hall doing an after-action report for a game I played uh, with my Skaven a couple of weeks ago now. I'm just getting around to doing an after-action report now, so I wanted to just go over the list. Uh, I didn't take, take pictures or anything, so I just wanted to kind of go through the list, go through the general high points of the game, what happened, and my thoughts on how everything performed. So, basic list, uh, I took the Claw Horde Battalion, uh, had a Grey Seer on Screaming Bell for my General with Master of Magic, so he had plus one to cast, and Warp Gale for his spell from the Lore of Ruin, I took a Vermin Lord Deceiver with the Suspicious Stone, giving him an additional five up save, uh, Claw Lord with Brutal Fury, that is an extra three attacks once per game, and an Arch Warlock with more, more, more Warp Power and a Vigor Dust Injector. Then over on the unit side, uh, 40 Clan Rats, 40 Clan Rats, 10 Storm Vermin, a unit of 20 Scryer Acolytes, a Warp Lightning Cannon, and the Warp Lightning Vortex. And then, of course, the Claw Horde. So, um, the game was... Uh, against a another Skaven opponent, so it was a Skaven mirror match, and we were playing better part of Valor. So with Skaven versus Skaven, there were six gnaw holes on the table. Basically, it just ended up with uh, one midfield on either side, and then two pretty evenly spaced in each territory. So um, they were basically pretty evenly spaced around the board. I started off with my Screaming Bell and both units of 40 Clan Rats. Um, kind of off to the right flank, I had one unit of 40 Clan Rats sitting on my center objective, one on my right objective. On the left hand side, I had my Acolytes and... Uh, my Vermin Lord Deceiver was hiding kind of in the back of them, uh, right next to a gnaw hole to hopefully skitter leap himself over to the other side of the board. My Storm Vermin were kind of like in between the two units of Clan Rats and next to the Screaming Bell. And the Warp Lightning Cannon was also kind of on the right side along with the Arch Warlock standing next to him and both of them like in range of a gnaw hole uh, both to do teleporting and the Arch Warlock getting his bonus to cast um, so I was very heavily on the right flank uh, my opponent uh, deployed actually fairly evenly he th had uh, three units of 40 clan rats he had two off, kind of like, basically like, one in the center, one in the right, one in the left, with the Screaming Bell covering the two on my right. So then I had my Acolytes right across the board from a unit of Clan Rats that were not inside the Screaming Bell's Battleshock Resistance bubble. Uh, he had a Warp Lightning Cannon in the center... I believe with a bombardier, uh, and he had a vermin lord deceiver, a vermin lord warp seer, and a unit of twenty acolytes. I'm trying to remember. I think that was about it. He also had the lightning vortex in his list. He was not running a battalion, uh, so I outdropped him, which was very good. Um, I had my Acolytes right across the table from that kind of undefended unit of Clan Rats. So top of turn one, I used a uh, Spark to let my Arch Warlock reroll casting attempts. Uh, so he was plus one to cast with a reroll uh, standing next to the um, 
gnaw hole and he was able to get the warp lightning vortex off on his first casting attempt which was really good uh all of the rest of my magic in that phase did nothing i didn't get warp gale off i didn't get uh dreaded skitter leap off i didn't get any other spells off um in that particular turn and then go on to movement I uh, jumped my arch warlock through the gnaw hole uh, to a gnaw hole on the other side of the board so that he would be within range of the scryer acolytes when they went to make their attacks uh, the acolytes I spent a command point to change their run roll to a six so they moved up the board uh, 12 inches, and then the opposing unit of clan rats were within range of all of their shots. Um, used a spark to add one damage to the acolytes, and the acolytes took out 20-something clan rats in one round of shooting, which was really sweet. Um, and then they ended up battle shocking off the board. Uh, the warp lightning vortex, I basically put it down right in front of his two units of clan rats and his screaming bell off on the flank. Uh, and I set it up in such a way that it was going to make moving cumbersome. And in order for him to get across the board to me, he was going to have to go through like all three of the pylons of the warp lightning vortex to get there um you know and his units were like just in range of all three of them to start with and after that they were uh gonna be in there for an extended period of time trying to get the whole unit through and uh without being able to run it was going to be very difficult uh for him to get through so the Warp Lightning Vortex did a lot, a lot of work in this game. It basically stopped him from even moving those two units of Clan Rats and the Screaming Bell on his side. Um, it slowly chewed away at everything. Uh, the... My Acolytes blowing up his unit of Clan Rats on the top of one really kind of set the tone for a lot of the game. Uh, in his first turn, he then kind of countercharged me with his own unit of Acolytes, kind of blew up like half of my unit. I was able to make them immune to Battle Shock so they didn't all go flying off the board. Um,. Other than that, he kind of didn't really do much of anything. Um, so turn one was fairly uneventful. Um, after that, we kind of like did a dance with our remaining acolytes in the middle of the board and warp lightning cannons, trying to get rid of our each other's acolytes. And my warp lightning vortex continued to whittle down his clan rats and his screaming bell. Uh, and I did eventually get my Vermin Lord Deceiver skitter leaped over to his side of the board to take on his Vermin Lord Deceiver. Um, got most of the way through it, and uh, then it I eventually got double teamed by his Deceiver and his uh, Warp Seer, so he eventually went down. Uh, along with some help from some other things, I think. I think he probably shot um, the Warp Lightning Cannon at it at some point. So, what ended up happening here? Um, he... His uh, objective on the left, on my left... He burned that for two points in turn two because I was putting pressure on that objective uh, between my Vermin Lord and a couple of Acolytes that were left. I was probably going to be able to get over there and do something about that. And so he kind of popped that to take that corner of the board out of play. 
he got his acolytes over to my side of the board and popped my left objective. So he was at three points to my zero. I eventually swung my storm vermin through, kind of snaking up the middle through. There was a ton of scattered terrain in the middle of the board. So I got my storm vermin through. Uh, and his clan rats, thankfully, were far enough off to the side that the they weren't really holding the middle objective. They were kind of double teaming his right objective. So all I really had to beat through was, uh, well, not much of anything. I just kind of got in range of it, didn't even charge, it was just within six inches of the objective and took it, raised it. So I was at one to three and uh, he started putting pressure on my middle objective with his vermin lords. But at that point in the game, I had taken out his uh, Screaming Bell and most of his clan rats with the Warp Lightning Vortex. And he didn't really have enough offensive pieces to move through where I was. <coughs> Excuse me. So he was really at a point where he was going to score eight points for the objective that all of his clan rats were on. I was going to definitely score eight points for the one in my right corner. So the only objective that was really at contest left was the center objective on my side. And it was like turn four. I did the math, kind of figured out what was going on. I raised my own objective so that the score went to five to three and at that point there was really no conceivable way that my opponent could win I still had my screaming bell giving uh, battle shock immunity to my clan rats and that was like 80 clan rats was going to be an awful lot of clan rats for my opponent to try and eventually work through um, basically it was just with vermin lords that was like all that he really had left as offense um, my Warp Lightning Vortex, I think, stayed on the board the whole game, and he didn't ever get his off. It was definitely a decisive part of the game, for sure. Overall performance, um, I was a little bit underwhelmed by the Vermin Lord Deceiver. I think he's valuable. Like, he's a really strong offensive piece. I don't think he's worth 300 points. Um, he, the ability to skitter leap over and put pressure on your opponent is definitely good though. Um, the arch warlock was probably the MVP of the game. Um, even though he eventually died, I think. No, actually, no, he did not. I, he died blowing himself up, casting his spell. Uh, trying to pump it up. He uh, managed to survive all of the Acolytes. Their globes just bounced off of him, or didn't at least do enough damage. They got into melee with him, and he, believe it or not, actually kind of stuck it out and took those guys down. And they didn't have Battleshock protection, so they were going down pretty quick. Uh, the unit of storm vermin, it was kind of, uh, well, it wasn't really a good evaluation of storm vermin because I didn't get to use them offensively, but I think that's kind of an indication of what I should be doing there. I think I probably would have been better off with 40 clan rats and then two units of 20 clan rats. Uh, 20 scryer acolytes is just too many. Um, pr I would definitely drop that down to 15, maybe even 10. Like, they just, like, they just nuke everything that they touch, you know. And then the unit falls apart to Battleshock eventually, uh, once your opponent gets units into it. 
My Warp Lightning Cannon did not do that much work. I was kind of disappointed in the Warp Lightning Cannon. Um, I, my Gisales finally came in, so I am going to be building those, painting those up, and uh, getting those uh, in as a replacement for Warp Lightning Cannons. My Claw Lord really didn't do anything either. The Claw Horde Battalion, uh, the best thing that it did for the whole game was decrease my drops and it gave me uh, an extra command point. Those were the valuable things out of that. Its actual ability was not used at all. I don't think I even activated the Claw Lord's command ability a single time. I used all of my command points for movement and yeah, it, it, I was. It, I wouldn't use the Claw Horde again. I think I would drop the Claw Lord. Deceiver would become a Warp Seer. I just didn't have my Warp Seer painted up yet, so I just wanted to run models that I had painted. I probably wouldn't run Storm Vermin in a list like this. I think it's better to have like you know Anvil units of Clan Rats and have them kind of spread around the board. The Acolytes are ridiculously powerful offensively. The Warp Lightning Vortex is definitely living up to the hype. It is really, really good. Um, Arch Warlock was absurdly powerful uh, for casting spells, and he was very useful throughout the game. Um, And I think with uh, some other things, some other changes to the list, I think he would be even better. Um, he, on the top of the first turn, I made a mistake in deployment and didn't have him in range of my Scryer Acolytes to use more and more and more warp power on them. So that was kind of useless. I was able to spark them to give them the additional attack. Oh, I'm sorry, additional damage on their attacks. So, underwhelmed by the Warp Lightning Vortex, underwhelmed by the Claw Horde and the Storm Vermin. Vermin Lord Deceiver was kind of a meh. I think I would probably use him in different lists, but there was definitely a lot learned here. The Screaming Bell was really useful mostly for making things immune to Battleshock. So, in future lists, that's probably going to look a little bit different. Um, Warp Gale was also not particularly useful. I think I would be much better off uh, just looking at the metagame and what kind of list direction I'm going with. I think Death Frenzy is probably a better spell. Um, and I might switch to a Gracier on foot and make the Screaming Bell a Plague Furnace instead and go with a unit of Plague Monks as a Hammer unit. So, I don't know. I think that's about all I have for thoughts on this so far. It was a good game. It was a lot of fun. I am loving playing uh, Skaven. They are a lot of fun to play. They are absurdly powerful. Um, and then they also blow up, which is fun. It makes the game interesting for sure. Um, that's all I got for now, folks. Feel free to leave your thoughts and comments on the list below. And as always... Hit the like, the subscribe, leave comments, even dislike if you want. Any engagement is good. Um, I will talk to you all later.